you still need cash to keep it up there, right? So the star is a high a product with a high market share in a high growth market, and it's a market leader. The strategic focus for star should that the star should become self financing. So what I mean by that is, if you use the star, should come to a point. The star product should come to a point where it can finance its own self. So if you use the loan to invest into a product like this, it should make or generate enough returns such that it can finance its own growth in the market. You know, because this is a good product. It has a high market share in a high growth market. High market share in a high growth market. Very, very key. Now you have what we call a cash cow. You have what we call a cash cow. A cash cow. You know, so MTM products, they are cash cows. You know why? Because they have high market share and their market growth is lower. It's slow. It's slow. It's slow. So high market share with a low market growth. You know, in the telecom industry, the growth is beginning to slow. And MTN has taken the chunk of the industry. You know, so it's a product with a high market share, but you know, so that's why we call it a cash cow. We call it a cash cow because it has captured the market. So what if it has captured the market? It means it has more customers. So it's getting more money. Cash cow is an expression for something that anything that gives you cash. So for example, if you say, oh, this job is a cash cow. It means that it gives you a lot of money. Or this side hustle is a cash cow. It means it gives you a lot of money. It gives you a lot of money. You see? Uh -huh. So a product could also be a cash cow if it has a high market share and growth is low, you know. So what would be the strategic decision here? Because it's the cash cow, you get the cash from this product, then you invest into, into the question mark product or the star product. You get the cash, you try to get more cash for here, then you invest it into other areas. You know, it's just like business. You know, you have several business lines, you know. One gives you a lot of money. So you take the money from that and invest it into other areas as well. Then you also have the dog. The dog. The dog. And the dog, there's a product in a low growth market with a low market share. So everything is low here. Low here. So a dog, it's possible that a dog will be losing, a dog product will be losing money. The reason why it's called dog, so this is the way to think about it. The reason why it's called dog is because dogs follow, you know. If you have a dog, a dog will follow you everywhere you go. So the dog is not leading, it's following, it's following the human being. So a dog will be losing money and will be using up cash, you know. You'll be using up cash. It's also possible that the dog might be having positive cash flows, but this will be small. It's insignificant. It's ins insignificant because the, the, the growth in the market is small. The market share is small. You know, most times the cash flows will be negative because it will be using up more cash than it earns. So what would be the strategic decision here? The strategic decision here would be that you withdraw. You withdraw from the market. You withdraw the products from the market because it might not make sense to be in the market. When you're investing more, you're not getting it back. It might not make sense to be in the market. And you, or you can also decide to enjoy the small, small cash flows that are coming in, the positive cash flow, even though they will not last for long but you enjoy those cash flows for a few more years. So let's look at some of the weaknesses. Weaknesses in the BCG model. What are some of the weaknesses in the BCG model? 
what are some of the weaknesses in the BCG model? Number one, it's the BCG model is only looking at market share and market growth. And these are not the only two factors that affect a product. You know, that's why it's called a two by two matrix. You know, it looks at high market share, high or low market share versus high or low market growth. Two by two. So I'm saying that one of the weaknesses is that there are other factors like the strength of competition, costs, brand, strength, etc., that affect a product. So it's not only those two. It's not only those two. The other weaknesses is that it might not be useful for analyzing the entire market. It might be using, it is useful for analyzing products in the market, but it is not useful for analyzing the entire market. Another difficulty with um, the BCG model is that it's sometimes difficult to um, measure what is high, what is low. So when you say low market share, what do you mean? When you say high market share, what do you mean? If you have 50%, if you have 40% of the market, will you say that is low? On what basis are you determining the high and the low? On what basis? So it's kind of like tricky to, to talk about high or to talk about low. It's very, very tricky. It's very, very tricky. Another thing too is it might be also difficult defining the market, you know, in terms of the geographical area and the competing products. And let's move on to SWOT. SWOT. What is the name of the school? SWOT. So SWOT is one of the famous models, famous for its simplicity. Very, very famous. So with SWOT, you're analyzing internal and external environment. Analyzing the internal and external environment. So you have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's a very, very simple model. Then what are your strengths? Your strengths. I always remember that if you have SWOT, so I always remember that SW relates to the internal environment. OT relates to the external environment. So you have SWOT. So your strengths are your your strengths are your internal, like the strengths you have internally in terms of your resources and your capabilities. You know, resources. Are, so a typical example of a strength would be your the experience of your staff. The experience of your staff. That's a strength. That's a strength. Then your weaknesses are your, could be anything, any limitations you have internally, um, any lack of resources you have internally. An example would be high attrition rates. High attrition rates of your experienced people. That could be a weakness. So you find out that in the company, a lot of people leave, they just leave. Experienced people, you train them, train them, train them, train them, train them, then they just move out. That's a weakness because it's happening internally. Internally. Or maybe um, employee dissatisfaction. These are all weaknesses. Or poor company culture. You know, the culture in the company is poor. Or it's not good, or it's toxic. Then you can, you can, um, what do you call it? You can, you can put it under weaknesses. Then you move on to opportunities. Opportunities are things within the external environment that are advantageous to the, um, They're advantageous to the company. So a typical example would be, let's say today, the president and the Kufuado government comes out and says, oh, you know what? We've reduced company tax from 25% to 15. That's a big opportunity. 
that came from the external environment. Opportunities could be several ways, several things, several things. You know, several things. Economic factors could exist in the external environment that the organization can take advantage of. Then you have threats. These are adverse risks in the external environment. Yeah. You know, maybe some competitor is trying to fight your business, trying to bring your business down. And these are all threats. So that's just about it for SWOT analysis. That's just it about for SWOT analysis. So that's just it about for SWOT analysis. Um, we talked about right the internal side of SWOT, right? But I wanted to highlight a few things. I wanted to highlight a few things um, that every organization has strategic capabilities. So you have. Um, core competencies that creates competitive advantage, you know? And that's a resource-based view of the organization, a resource. So what do I mean by resource-based view? It means that it shows you the chain of activities that causes the resources of an organization to drive strategy, or to drive strategic capability of the organization. So first of all, it starts with resources. The resources, when well-trained and well honed to become core competencies, then these core competencies must be delivered appropriately to the necessary projects. Yeah. Then if they are delivered necessary to, or they are assigned to the necessary projects, then that's when the organization begins to get competitive advantage. Then in that case, the resource becomes a strategic capability. So it starts from resource, moves to core competency, then delivery mechanisms, then competitive advantage, then strategic capability. So that's the resource-based view. The resource-based view is that it's how you use your resources to create competitive advantage or the ability to use one's competencies to create competitive advantage. Now let's look at the four P's. This is another model as well. Or the marketing mix. The marketing mix. You know, the marketing mix. Customers have several, several um, needs from price to quality, etc. But the marketing mix um, gives you a simple model to capture, um, to capture your marketing mix. So it starts with your product. What product are you selling? What is the what are the features? What are the what is the quality? Then it's, you also have your price. You also have your price. You also have your price. So I need to change what's under the price and send it to you. But you have your price, you have your place. The place refers to the channels of distribution or the location. The channels of distribution or the location. Then you also have promotion, which is the way the product is adver advertised. So this is what we call the marketing mix. Yeah. For a successful marketing approach, you need to look at products, you need to look, you need to look at the right product, right price, right place, right promotion. So to the person who was asking um, the question around MTA, why are they successful? Um, one of the things you could look at is the marketing mix as well. You know, what kind of products are they designing compared to their competitors? What prices are they offering at it at? You know, later I'll be talking about pricing strategies. Then what are the, their channels of distribution? So what MTN began to do is, for example, they brought a SIM card to the doorstep of people. You'll be, you'll be sitting at your house and you see an MTN agent working, working selling SIMs. <laughs> you know, they won't let you come to the store. No, no, no. They are bringing the SIM card to you. That's place. That's channel of distribution. That's location the way in which the customer obtains the product. 
then their promotion strategies to a solid. You know, they understand the customer, they understand the Ghanaian, what kind of adverts will reach out to them, etc. Yeah. So that's it for today. That's it for today. So um, that's it for today. So I don't know if you have any questions. Please, do you have any questions? Hello? Any questions, please? No. Okay, if there are no, no, questions. There are, okay, if there are no questions, then um, thank you for coming. See you um, next week. Should we keep the time at, we are keeping the time at Friday, right? Yes, Friday. Yeah, Friday, okay. So next week, Friday, God willing, see you. Thank you. Thank you too. Yes. Bye.